morning, guys and gals. DIY slash CNC woodworker here with you this fine morning. I'm in the process of starting a router carved here on this special request plaque that I've got. And I've got one, two plaques over here, another special request plaque over here that's ready for its paint stage. And I got a third plaque over here that I'm doing for myself, uh, ready to be painted also. That's the uh, Pledge of Allegiance plaque that I've had to do four times. I think four, if not five, to get it correct. But anyhow, it's ready to go and this is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. Got my dust collection running. It's early Tuesday morning. Well, it's early for me. the effect that it gives my flat. Brain again. But you can see, I don't know if you can see back there, but there's just a little bit of chip out here, but when I run this with the brain, it will clear that up. Or clean it up, I should say. It'll grab something in the oak and it'll chip out and make an ugly, ugly, ugly cutout. Now I've got to sand this a bit, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut all this stuff off here. Get this vacuum shut down. Now, the next stage on this is to sand it, which I'm going to do. And once I get it all sanded, I'll put it over here on my little drying rack and uh, start spraying it with polyurethane. Now this plaque here I've sprayed with polyurethane. It's what I call my anniversary plaque. This is a special request. This is a young couple's going to be getting married. Well, I say young couple. I understand they're older people, but they're going to be getting married uh, October the 7th this year. And this is a wedding gift to them from my brother. So I'm doing it for them. Now I've got it all sprayed. I've got all the polyurethane on it now. That's got it, should have it sealed. And I'll come in here and I'll spray all the lettering with black paint. I'll be doing that later today. And then of course I'll go back and resand it and respray it. And, and then it'll be a completed plaque. And over here is my large. This is a 24 inch. It's the largest one I think I've ever done. It's the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, the history, the original pledge, the revised version in 1923, and then revised again in final current version from 1954. I've got enough polyurethane on it. I think I've got it all sealed good. I'm going to come in here and, 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 and spray these lettering again with black paint. Then once that's dried, we'll sand it all off leaving just the black paint down in the letters and then I'll come back polyurethane it and uh, it'll be ready to go. That's what I'm doing this morning. I'm going to go ahead and take this plaque over here, sand on it a spell. Uh, you've seen sanding, you don't need to watch me do that. I'll go ahead and uh, stop the video for now and uh, come back to you once I've got all this sanding done and I put it over here start spraying it with the polyurethane and again I'll show you how 
the polyurethane and this red oak react with each other and how it goes from being a, a plain looking board like this to being a board that looks like this. This is the same board as this board. It's just been sprayed with polyurethane, several coats. And uh, I think it's a real nice look. I really like it. And uh, that's the way I do it. So I will pause the video for now. We'll be back with you shortly. Okay, folks, well, I've had a situation here that I really haven't had before. That carving special request that I had that I did. I don't know if my bit was dull or what happened, if it was just the wood grain or whatever it was, but it just it just carved terribly. I usually carve these things, the letters an eighth of an inch deep, and that's what I did on this one. And I've got all kind of torn and ripped uh, fibers in there and it just won't clean up and I don't like it. I, I, I could just go ahead and put it out like it is, but uh, I'm not happy with it and I don't want to put something like that on the market. So I'm going to cut it. It was 12. I'm making this uh, 16. I'm adding 4 inches to the board. It'll give me more space. I can make my letters a little taller, a little wider. And uh, instead of using that V bit, I'll be able to use a, uh, either a round bottom or a flat bottom uh, straight cut bit carve these letters with so that's what we're going to do let's see what happens here have I got this plugged in no it's not going to do anything because I don't have it plugged in ain't that cute all right well like I said I guess there's a first time for everything this has been a first for me and I can't I can't tell you how many plaques I've cut and made and there you go same piece of board that I made the other piece out of but uh, I'm hoping by making it longer I won't have to bunch the letters up so much and it'll carve better pardon me while I go out of camera here put this wood up but there you are so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for now go back inside set this board up and get it carving and uh, be back later Okay, folks, <laughs> here we go. I'm going to try this lettering here. <laughs> See what this comes out like. I uh, get in the picture to begin with. Let's see if I can turn it. Get me a little more in the photo. Yeah, there we go. No, uh, not only am I not an airbrush painter. I'm not much of a photographer either, but y'all figured that out, ain't you? Uh, I got this all set up, I think. I've used this one time before with mixed results. So we're going to try it again and see what happens. I'm using a black primer and I'm trying just to spray down in the lettering. I marked off as much of the, or didn't mark off, I masked off as much of the as I could. I'm still learning this airbrush gun, how it works. So we will see. The whole idea for getting this airbrush was to have less of a mess when I, when I painted. I don't know if that's worked or not. But I need to use this airbrush a whole lot more than what I'm using it. Just I'm accustomed to it.
So we will see. You can watch me make a mess. And, uh, again, I'm trying to get this without spraying so much paint everywhere. And the more you pull this trigger, the more the paint comes out. It's going to make sense, but I'm sure there's a technique to it and an art to it that I've not come close to mastering yet, but we will try. I'm looking to see if I've got any untainted wood if you're wondering why I'm leaning over like a crazy person. I had to take that other plaque that I carved this morning, or, well actually I carved it yesterday, and I did not like the way it came out. I don't know what was wrong with it. I suspect, and I may be wrong, but I suspect I was using a uh, bit that I had used too much and it's pretty much worn out, I think. But it's carving now, but what I did is I made the board two inches longer so that allowed me to expand the letters a little bit make them a little bit bigger a little more spacing between them and uh, oh, we'll go from there now I've got paint all over everywhere here let's see if I can hook this here where it won't fall down paint all over me I don't know how that happened but it did All right, we will let this dry. It looks like I've got everything black that I want black. You can't see there what I'm doing. Get it where you can see it. Now, when this is all dried, I'll come back and sand all this overspray off and leave the black down in the letter. And you've seen me do that before. But instead of using an aerosol uh, spray gun, I use my little compressor here. So I'm going to set this over here and just let it dry. And uh, I've got another one over here to start. Oh, I'm almost afraid to start this one, but I'm going to. Oh, i got this black paint all over me. Uh, this is going to be a trick. Well, let me... Uh, Pause the video for a while. I need to tape this over the areas I don't want paint on. And uh, I'll be back with you. I'll be back with you in a little bit. Okay guys, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this over here. Oh and hope I don't make a teetotal mess out of it. Start here at the bottom and see what happens. The idea. Am I recording even? <laughs> Let me double check here. Excuse me while I look, folks. Yeah, all right, I'm recording. Uh,
see what this is going to make a mess or what it's going to look like. Right now I'm spraying this border. I get black all down in it. I guess that compressor is going to turn back on eventually. I had it off the whole time. Okay, well, using the stored up pressure. just don't know folks uh, I, I'm getting paint down in there but I don't know how much better than just spraying it with a spray can this is it's still got a lot of over over spray on it to get everything the way I want it then again it's probably just me not knowing what I'm doing which I believe that's probably a major problem I've got right now I'm just kind of winging it with this airbrush let's get the paint down in there now how much paint I'm going to use I want it to refill already I see get over here to my paint bottle Hope I got enough paint in this little jar to do what I'm wanting to do. see what I'm doing up here. Yeah, I got to spray from a different angle here to get those. killing my back for you guys that don't know when I haven't told you a hundred times I got a screwed up back and this ain't helping it none
I don't know, folks. I think I need to come out here and practice with this thing a little bit more than what I do. Uh, not again. Uh, uh, getting there. <laughs> One more cup full will probably make it. Seems like I get my best coverage when I pull the trigger all the way back. Then it gives me a whole lot more overspray. And right now, the way my back's feeling, I don't care. I just want to get it black paint on it. That's what I got a sander for, I guess. 80 grit sandpaper. See if I can finish up with this little bit of paint I got left in my cup here. Hopefully I've got enough to get through this. Really don't want to pour any more in it. Ah, come on. <laughs> it's turkey. <laughs> Two more drops. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Alright, is there anything I missed? I'm sure my sweat dripping all over it don't help things either. Looks like I've got it. Now, all I gotta do is clean this turkey. First off, let's try and open this up without spilling it everywhere. I'm making a major mess. Yes, that's going to be it. I won't stop my filming because I got to clean my gun here. And there ain't no need me making you watch me clean my gun because, well, it's just cleaning the gun. So we will cut this thing off and let this paint dry. And when I get around to sanding it, we'll come back to you and show you the sanding process. So, now this is the DIY slash CNC Woodworker. We're signing off. Have a good day.